Live. Welcome to HDTV. You're now rocking with your boy. Yeah. We are in the damn building. What's up with y'all? I'm going to drop some more content today. Just have to get on this early morning shift. They didn't call me in the drive and everything, so, you know, you got to get what you, you got to do what you got to do, you feel me? Now, you got all these Kobe Bryant stories coming out. And it's like, look, the man's not here anymore. You feel me? So, I did not like the fact that the Lakers allowed LeBron James to take a picture with the Lakers as if he's a Laker. You're not a Laker, man. And to me, I would have looked at him like, yo, bro, what are you doing? You're not no damn Laker. Get out of here. Now, the ESPN Sports Rank That's the media. So I don't go by them. Like I told you. I have tier one players. And then I have tier two players and tier three. That's it. LeBron James is a tier one talent. but he's a tier three player. So that means that he's not a top player in my opinion <clears throat> and everybody gets mad when I don't um put him like as the greatest of all time and he's not he's not the greatest of all time um he's not even a Laker so I'm sorry to burst people bubble but he's not now the Kobe Bryant thing I just felt like it was downright disrespectful. Downright disrespectful, in my opinion, <clears throat> that they um you know is downright disrespectful in my opinion that the Lakers you know, have lost the, the, the insight of what Kobe Bryant, the fabric of superstar that he was. Kobe Bryant was the Los Angeles Lakers for 20 some years. And I include after he left. After he left, left such a huge mark that people were like, man, his career was polarizing. Like the Kobe commercial when he said Kobe sucks, when they were yelling Kobe sucks. 
You know how Kobe was. Kobe wanted you to hate him if you hated him. If you loved him, he wanted you to love him. He never wanted to be a one foot in, one foot out person or in between. And that's what made Kobe, that's what made him great. He didn't care about giving you the political answer or giving you the BS answer, man. Kobe was like, look, this is what I'm trying to do. And to me, I saw something Gary Payton said on DJ Vlad about um, Kobe and, you know, him learning and stuff from him and how um, the feud with him and Shaq, they could have talked it out. That was one of Kobe's biggest regrets, and he said it was making it work with Shaq. Um, but at the time, Kobe had the, the trial going on and he just got out of it and, you know, he it left a scar on him. And Shaquille O'Neal, who is LeBron, like him and LeBron are the same person. They're very goofy. They're very playful. They, you know, the only opposite of them is Shaq had a bigger killer instinct than um, Shaq. I mean, than LeBron. Shaq would try to bury you when he can. That's one thing I give Shaq. Shaq wanted to, like, when he turned it on, he turned it on. But um, Shaq, that's when I seen that Shaq really wasn't a leader, and he wasn't. Shaquille O'Neal at that time should have comforted his brother and to me Shaq should have sacrificed for the team but see Shaq was too big on oh I gotta get this money I gotta get that money and it's like he was at the time and I saw it I saw it the year before they got back to the championship cause they lost to um they lost to um the Spurs in the West, I think it was the semis or the Western Conference Finals, one of those things. And I saw it. Shaq just did not look good. Shaq was moving a little slower. He wasn't getting to the blocks as fast. And I told everybody they should have traded Shaq right then and there. I would have traded Shaq. I would have let Shaq go and I would have started building around Kobe because Kobe was the is the young guy. You know, Kobe got you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of miles, a lot of, a lot of, um, he has a lot of, um, time left. And in my opinion, that's what they should have done. But see the Lakers and everything, they were like, all right, we're going to get one more time with Shaq. And that's what happened with a lot of these franchises. They hold on to their players longer. You know, everybody gets upset with Bill Belichick, but Bill Belichick, you know, makes the right calls. The only thing he didn't make the right call on was Brady. <laughs> but oh yeah, in the Cam Newton situation. The Brady and Cam Newton situation was real foul how Belichick was towards those those men. Um, and to me, you know, he showed it, okay, I got rid of these guys, I got rid of these guys because you know, those guys were at the point they were aging. You know, they were they were about done. You know what I'm saying? So, but my opinion is that I just feel like um, Shaq's immaturity and Shaq's not willing to sacrifice and let Kobe take over is what was Shaq's demise. And this is why Shaq never really, never really, you know, got um, a lot of love. He didn't really get a lot of respect because, you know, Shaq really wasn't that guy like that. See, people think that, you know, Charles Barkley be trolling. Charles Barkley tell the truth. It's like, bro, you had Dwayne Wade and Kobe Bryant. <laughs> it's like, bro, are you serious? And you trying to talk about championships and this. It's like, bro, we watch the games. And, you know, Charles can't really go in deep because he don't want to mess his thing up with his master. His master would be mad if he, you know, 
tells the whole truth about you know certain situations but Charles know all these guys know all these guys know that Kobe Bryant is the ultimate reason Shaq and them won because when Kobe after on um, when Kobe developed um, and you know was able to be a reliable option um, you started seeing the change you started seeing um, the, the team play a lot better Kobe was being trusted down the stretch more to hit certain shots they hit big shots like to get the ball in situations Kobe was the point guard everybody was like no nah, Ron Harper was it Derek Fisher no they were not the point guard Kobe was the point guard Kobe was giving the ball to everybody. He was moving the ball. He was setting up the plays because that's that's the one thing Phil Jackson always said about Kobe. Kobe would stay. Kobe would um. Kobe would would um stick with the game plan a little better than Mike did. You know, he would stick with the game plan a little longer. Um, and it would go from there. Shaq's jealousy is what ultimately, to me, made him not a um, top 50 player. He's probably a top, you know, 75 or 80-some player. I, I don't know. Um, Shaq, in my opinion, you know, he kind of, you know, he kind of um, fell off to me. And he could have had a longer career if he would have let um, Kobe take over. But that ego, that ego, and everybody blamed Kobe. Everybody was blaming Kobe. And then we realized, and I, and I told people, I was like, bro, y'all blaming Kobe for what? <laughs> y'all blaming Kobe for what? Shaq, Shaq is a guy who has always been that. He's always been upset because... He wants it all. He wants the attention. But the thing about Shaq is Shaq's problem is Shaq's game never got better. That's why I told people I would take Giannis over Shaq. Shaq Giannis is way better than Shaq was. Giannis could run the floor better. Giannis could um Giannis could make the pass better. He could shoot a whole lot better. I mean, are we even having that question? <laughs> Giannis is a way better shooter than Shaq. Free throws, I think they're about the same. I think Giannis is a lot better, a little better than him at that. You know, and that's what I'm saying. Even Tim Duncan during that time was better than Shaq. All these YouTube content creators and all these trolls on the internet trying to tell me about Shaq. When I watched Shaq growing up, Shaq was a very great talent. He was a good talent. He's one of the greatest talents. Now, if you're trying to say he's in your top 10 or 5 off of talent, then I got no issue. The same with the Brownies. If you want to say off of talent, yeah, but if you're talking about strictly basketball player, him and LeBron are like, I got I got them out of the they're not they're not anywhere close in the top 50 or LeBron's not even in the 100 to me. He's a tier 3 player. Um, Shaq to me was a um, to me Shaq was a um, tier. I say he was a tier three player. He never really was a great player to me. Shaq never really worked on his game. He got away with offensive fouling and pushing guys out, pushing guys away. But you know, but I don't put all of that on Kobe at the time because Kobe was going through a, a thing where a woman falsely accused him. And you know, I read the reports what they what she said he did to him and everything. I mean what he did to her and everything. And I read the reports and I was telling people at that time, like, you know, we don't know what happened. It's the same thing with the Deshaun Watson thing. You know. And then people get upset with us when we um, go after Big Ben. And it's like, bro, Big Ben allegedly, all this stuff is allegedly, by the way. 
Big Ben, dog, got away with a lot of stuff, bro. And y'all don't understand that. And that's the problem with a lot of people. A lot of people do not understand that. You know, they look to, they look to basically try to condemn people of doing this and doing that when they did it. She didn't show up to the court case. So we're not going to go down that line. But Shaquille O'Neal, to me, showed a lot of immaturity. Um, he, he should have... He should have he should have let Kobe take over. But to me the problem with Shaq, Shaq was the problem. He got comfortable, too comfortable, and that's why he didn't last as long as he should have. You know, Shaq should have been playing at a higher level at that time, but he had developed no skills. And it was showing in Miami, like when they lost to the Pistons. Dwayne Wade was getting locked down by Tayshawn Prince, and I believe he got hurt. And it was all on Shaq to get something done, and they just shut Shaq down <laughs> because they knew how to play Shaq from the year before when they played him in the championship. And then everybody want to say, oh, man, Kobe wasn't getting Shaq the ball. I'm like, he was giving him the ball. The problem is the Pistons moved the pressure up. And see, if Shaq has such a high IQ, why didn't Shaq adjust to the defensive coverage that the Pistons did? This is why I tell y'all, Shaq's IQ was very low. LeBron James, IQ, very low. If you had a high IQ, why can't you adjust your game? See, this is what make a great player to me. A player who can adjust his game to those around him as well as still get his buckets and still can go off. You understand? You know, I don't I don't think people understand. You know, for real, I don't I don't think people understand at all that that's what make you a great player is when you have the ability to adjust your game. Michael Jordan, you know, as great as he was and everything, Michael had to learn to let the ball go out of his hands, to move the ball. Michael dominated the ball a lot in his career. He had probably one of the highest PERs in history, you know, but as he got older, he had to learn, okay, I got to I got to get the ball in the blocks. I got to fade away. I got to do certain stuff to keep my game going. So, but Gary Payton, I mean, you know, Gary Payton was, you know, right. They should have sat down and talked. But Gary Payton told the truth when he was on DJ Vlad and said, look, man, um, when you get accused of something, when somebody lies on you, <laughs> saying that you did this and did that you're not going to be the same person after that and Kobe wasn't Kobe was paranoid that really messed Kobe up if that would have never happened Kobe probably would have had gotten all his accolades everyone would have loved him they would have said Kobe is up there with Jordan you know he's number two on the list of all time and all of this stuff, now all of a sudden, you know, they want to put LeBronies up there. It's like, dog, this dude has the worst, this dude has the worst playoff percentage and finals percentage, like, excuse me, the finals percentage in history. You know, that that's what I'm saying. Like, this, this guy here is like, stop it. You want to keep pushing this guy down everybody's throat as he's the greatest. If he's number two on the list, why is he struggling? And he had a chance to pick this team. See, that's what I'm saying. You guys don't understand. Kobe Bryant played with the less, he played with lesser talent than MJ and, and, and LeBron. Maybe MJ early on probably had lesser talent, but I say 87, 88, 89, you know, those guys got better. Those guys were getting better. In the 90s, like, come on, you you see that team he had in the 90s. Michael, latter part of his career, he had a better team. And then everybody want to say, 
Well, Kobe, first off, you know, look at him with Nick Van Exel and Eddie Jones. And I'm trying to tell people, man, stop it. <laughs> Nick Van Exel was never that elite type of player. He was a good piece. But Nick problem is he played more two guard than the one. Eddie Jones, as, as good and great of a defender he was, Eddie Jones was always a tier three player. <laughs> He's a tier three player. He's not a tier one. People are like, he made an all-star. There's plenty of tier three players that made an all-star. You know, let's stop it. Stop with the stop with trying to over glorify talent. But um Kobe Bryant, I agree with Gary Payton that. That that goes along the lines of Kobe Bryant. Um, Kobe Bryant's biggest regret was not actually mending it with Shaq sooner, where they could have won. Like they could have won a lot of games, but you know I don't put that on Kobe. Kobe at that time was about to go to jail for the rest of his life. You know he had to fight for his life. You know it was crazy. He was granted to go to court, and then he could still play basketball. And he was killing guys. He was lighting guys up. He was dropping 50s, 60s. It was, oh my gosh, it was crazy that year. And then he hit those last second buzzer beaters against Portland. It was like, oh my goodness. Kobe's, Kobe's official, man. You got to give it to him. You know, you guys just don't want to give it to him because, you know, he, he he took his style from Mike, which ain't nothing wrong with that. He looked up to Mike. There's been plenty of players. Mike took his style from David Thompson, from Skywalker himself. Those acrobatic shots, those tongue out and going under the rim and throwing the ball up. You know, that was... um. That was David Thompson. You know, but thank you guys for listening. Like, comment, subscribe, share this. Hit that notification bell to select all to receive upcoming notifications. And if you guys love what you hear, you can um, donate to the page by um, cash apping me at the word. Um, oh, you can go to my description box. Excuse me. You can hit the link. And it'll take you on to my cash app. And basically from there, you know, you guys can um, donate a dollar, donate a million dollars. Whatever you're willing to give, we accept. And you guys can also, when the video premieres or go live, you guys can, um, you know, you guys can um, super chat. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing wrong with it. You can super chat. You know, shout out to One True Emperor, Emperor So Avi Love, Carcino for Life. Those guys came by and they super chat. So you guys could do the same. So, man, thank you guys, man, for your love and blessings, man. I have another video for y'all later. We out. <laughs> Deezy.